Hey everyone, welcome back. We're here in the hangar with 92112, catching up on some maintenance after our trip to Oshkosh, just doing an oil change and going through the system. While I'm at it, I decided it's time to catch up on some long awaited upgrades. So, I decided I'm gonna install my engine monitor. And what that's gonna look like is everything on this side of the panel is coming out and I've got two new instruments that are gonna replace the tachometer and the manifold pressure gauge. And it's gonna replace, like I said, everything else you see here with a primary display. What I decided to go with was the Electronics International CGR30. And I'm going with the combo. So it's gonna be uh, two of these. It's gonna replace, like I said, all the primary stuff. So a bit of a task, but figured I'd get it started, stop putting it off, and uh, take care of a few other things while I'm at it. So I started pulling the headliner. I gotta get inside here and into the wing root. I gotta replace the fuel senders. So I gotta take these out first and send them off to EI and they're gonna build the new ones based on the old ones. So that's a little bit of a task, but uh, let's get started. So I've already pulled all the hardware off the wing root fairings. I've got it stored neatly on this little card. There's not a lot of room between the fuselage and the wing. So really the only way to access up inside of there is through the cabin. And that's why I'm pulling the headliner. Once the headliner's out of the way, I'll be able to get to that hole right there, which for some reason was covered in some really gross aluminum tape pulled that off uh, I can see the, the reason why somebody wanted to cover that up but I don't think they did a very good job and that's pretty much the way it came out so I think I could do a better job putting it back together Meanwhile, I got to get up here and remove the sun shades for the sun visors and then this strip across the front of the headliner once that's out of the way we'll be able to take this uh, this trim piece off as well and I'll have better access to peel the front half of the headliner off. Okay. Okay, there's the other sun visor. Set that thing somewhere. Okay, got that one out. Put this aside. What do we have left here? So, this headliner just hooks in place for the most part. It's kind of neat. Dusty. I got the fan running. It's kind of hot in here. Let's see. It's just kind of hold in with teeth. Sometimes you just kind of pry it apart a little bit with a screwdriver. Try to get the fabric off the teeth without tearing it. the hardest part not damaging stuff that headliner bow wasn't even in the clip all right need to remove this light assembly as well
for those wondering, yes, I am a certified mechanic, airframe and power plant, so I am legal to do all this stuff myself. I don't recommend people work on their own airplanes unless they have the proper training and certification. All right, there we go. Making progress. All right, we've pretty much gotten the headliner peeled back as far as we need to. You can see here, this hole uh, it's covered in like duct tape, which is lovely. The other side had aluminum tape on it. We're gonna get rid of that. We're gonna do a better job putting it back together. Uh, some more duct tape here. Yeah, that stuff's old and crispy. And that's the hole that we need to work with. So we got access and it's gonna be a little bit of a challenge probably working that fuel sender out through that hole. So let me uh, prep for the next steps and see how much I wanna All do right, it. Well, after removing more, uh, more duct tape and aluminum tape done by God knows who, uh, that's the hole I need to work through. If you move that piece of tubing, you can kind of see the fuel sender back there. Now what's interesting is uh, they say McFarlane on them, which is kind of cool. It means they're not original and not as old as I thought, but nonetheless, they're being changed out. So before I get any further down this road, I'm just gonna make sure that the tank level is low enough so that when I open that seal, I don't have gas come pouring out. So I know I drained most of the tank already, but I'm just gonna double check. I don't need any surprises with fuel. So this is telling me I got, I don't know, maybe three or four gallons in this tank. Not a lot, should be below the level. But let's drain some out just in case. This might take forever. Well, it took a lot of fussing but I was able to get the sender out. Not too bad all in all. Now I gotta figure out how to plug that hole up. I might take some old senders that I have and stick them in the hole just to keep the tank from drying out while I wait for the new senders. So, all right, let's do the next one. So I was thinking I'd be able to take these old fuel senders and just install them temporarily just so I don't have my fuel tank exposed. But the hole pattern is different. Just by, uh, I mean, eighth of an inch or something. So now I'm gonna just take the sheet metal and make some blank off plates. Come over to my handy dandy shear and just stamp off a couple covers. Oops. There's one. Easy enough, made a couple covers, and I just gotta drill them out with the right hole pattern. Okay, much better. Not perfect, but I can work with this. So, just need to trace this out, punch these holes, and I'll have my cover plate. Well, I think that's about it for tonight. It's pretty hot. Time to go home, have some dinner, hang out with the fam. Made pretty good progress. Got both senders out so I can package them up, send them off to have the new ones made. Temporarily plugged up the holes, so I think it's it's pretty good for now. Thanks for watching and uh, keep an eye out for that next video.